The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Last Tiger Technicians Hour Live uh, <clears throat> for 2017. I'll be away tomorrow. I will try to get for my subscribers, I'll try to get a wrap up uh, <clears throat> last Traders Corner and Dow Chart out tomorrow before I leave. Um, <clears throat> quite a year. Uh, we are still very close to all-time highs at this particular point. Dow's at 24,808, up 34. S&P is up $1.80 at 2684. Comp index is up 8 at 6947. Uh, you've got the VIX down at 10.25. It's down 22 cents, but it's moved off the nines. It's in the tens. I'm watching this one closely. The E-mini right now is down 50 cents at 26.85. I mentioned uh, yesterday and the day before that the 26.98 round number high that was made on the 18th, I forgot to put the date in, I think it was it was actually a double top. So it was 18th and 19th, yep, 18th and 19th of December. Unusual to get a chapter wave two bar reversal like that and not plunge below the nine period exponential moving average. It's really seen this is the uh, the seventh session since the highs were made, uh, where the nine period moving average of 2681, yep, 2681 hasn't been touched. I think it's getting closer and closer to being touched, should be touched very soon. Um, but most importantly, you've used up time as the technicals have weakened a little bit. The MACD is crossed negative. Now there's a wide beta, or theta, I never know which one to call it, a wide distance between the nine period differential, the green line right here on the daily, and the slow moving average, the 26 period moving average. And uh, that to me always is a heads up to say, if there is any weakness, in this case, uh, a couple of closes intraday below the 2681 level, that'll suggest that there's a very quick drop to an important level of support. Actually, there's no level of support because there's this huge candle, the big spike on the 15th that went from the 2652 level to 2683. That's a 30 point gap. So I'm looking at this and saying, okay, if I was to draw a trend line, the trend line would come in like this. I'm just drawing it right now. Chapman wave falling X, low, uh, declining cone formation. And that says over the next three to four, let's say three to five sessions, the 2671 to 2667 is going to be absolutely key a support, must hold. Otherwise, January is probably going to be a, a pretty weak month. And on the other hand, we're looking at a break above 2698. I'm actually going to say 2703. I don't care what it is. If 2703 is touched, that's suggesting that the 25,000 level in the Dow will be tested, and that there's a chance that 25,100 will be hit. If the Dow trades in the 25,100 level, I, I'm probably going to be wrong about a consolidation into January. I'm thinking consolidation into January for my trader, uh, for my subscribers to my opening call. We've already begun positions. The first time we've actually started adding uh, to the short side, um, mostly taking our, our long positions with tighter stops and taking some profits where we can and introducing uh, new shorts. This is just the way I'm looking at it. If you look at this weekly chart, by any measure, this is somewhat overbought, the weekly chart of the E-mini, and you've got this doji candle from last week. If there's no new high this week, you actually make a peak F slash B. Let's go to the Dow because it's a little, uh, it's a little clearer. Look, the Dow made this tiny doji candle last week. If there is a close above 24878 on the weekly chart that goes until tomorrow at 4 o'clock, last day of the trading day, um, and they have a full day always on the last day of the year, then I have to admit that that weekly chart is actually now a little bit more positive rather than negative. And if there is a close, I don't know how it's going to do that, but a close below 24697, let's call it 24690, between now and tomorrow at 4 o'clock, 
that's a pretty sharp pullback. Um, that's going to be a negative for that candle, that doji candle, based on my work. Okay. Meantime, back at the ranch, let's go back to the e-mini just to show you something very interesting. In the 120-minute chart, 120-minute chart has just been in this rectangle formation. And what is my expression? A rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Look at this, between 2682s and 2691 or 92, just stuck in this range. The way the MACD and Stochastic are acting right now, it would say that a move below 2680 on a short-term basis, I can show you that in the 10-minute chart. Look, there's a 10-minute chart. It's making this from a peak D, second peak D. From this peak D, a pullback goes from the 20, 2689 level today, round number high, goes down to the 26. 83.25 low that was made at about 10.40 uh, Eastern time. Trying to rally, and it's got a cup formation vying with an arch that's become a lowercase h to a lowercase m. And that's suggesting that 26.86 is going to be tough to break to the upside today. Um, and the downside really must, on a very short-term basis, based on the 10-minute chart, must hold 26.85. 350. All right, let's get out of this. We've got a lot of questions, so I want to deal with them today, especially since uh, I will not be here tomorrow. So I'll only be back on Tuesday. Let's just finish this up here. So the Dow parameters, let's make it real clear. Here we go. Parameters. Parameters, because I won't be here tomorrow, and let's go all the way into Tuesday. For the Dow, we're looking at uh, a high so far today of 24,000. Uh, 831, a push into the 24,800 and I'd say 40s would be a really good action and suggest there's a cup formation for me rather than the Chamway falling axe, declining lows, declining highs and declining lows. All right, a pullback by late today into the 24,700. 60 levels, say 40 points down from you. I'm not sure what's going to do that, but it goes negative. We say, uh-oh, in this choppy range, using up time. Is this distribution from the 18th of December in the Dow with other stocks? It's actually longer. Some stocks, it's shorter. But is there distribution going on here, getting ready for a January pullback and then waiting for a re-entry on some of these positions? I think that could very well be happening. All right, let's go to the S&P, just give you parameters as quickly as I can. Parameters for the S&P at 2684.65 up to, I would say 2689 above that, and that's really quite positive on the day, below 2682 to 2681. Let's make it 2681. It says, uh-oh, just chopping sideways, nothing to see here, folks. QQQ series, the NDX 100. Um, this is trading not very well. It's up 28 cents at 156.82. It is above the nine-period moving average. Actually, it's right on the nine-period moving average. They're having pushed above it. The technicals are really quite weak. I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, I think the Q is kind of done for right now. I don't know what's going to take it to 160. It's a 158.77 was the high of the 18th. I, I, I'm not impressed at this particular point with the Qs. The SMH is a very big clue to what's going on. SMHs has been falling for a while since uh, the 22nd, 24th double top back in uh, November. And we're now trading at 98 from the 105 area. This is just very weak action. I think this is an H pattern in the in the monthly in the weekly chart and that we should see a break under 95. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Right, folks, a couple of things. I was asked about the IWM. The IWM is trading at 153.54. And the question was to sell or not to sell. This is the question on IWM. What I said was, this, first of all, there's a pattern here. I've gone through this almost every day for the last uh, couple, of, couple of weeks. And my suggestion has been that I believe we made a peak C1, C2. There could even be a C3, slightly lower high. 155.41 is the all-time high back on the 4th of December. 154.77, uh, 70 uh, about 70 cents lower, was the high on the 19th. And now you could actually put in a little trend line and say, okay, there's a chance over the next uh, week or so. Why is that not doing it? Let me just get this corrected. Ah, there you are. There is a chance uh, that there could be another little pop up. That now there's a declining trend line. I usually don't like to make peak C1, C2 so wide. I like it to just be within sense of the previous high. But the technicals all suggested there could have been a high and there wasn't. So I'm saying that I think we've made some kind of a shorter term top in the IWM, especially based on the weekly chart, which I think is more a D than a B. But most importantly, what I said was it's trading at 153.55 or 42 cents. Let me see what I said in the uh, den. Um, if, you, if you make IWM, not IWN, IWM, that's a Russell 2000, 152.50, the cutoff level, that should see you well or serve you well. Upside runs until it doesn't. Simple solution. In other words, if you're thinking that you don't want to take much risk right now, you can have a risk of less, about a point right now. If it goes under it, there's a good chance that it's going to go down towards the 151, 150 area quite quickly. And if it keeps moving high, it's using the nine period moving average of 153.03 as some kind of a, a, a stair step move. This, this is your support level, this is the escalator and it's using it to keep trying to bounce. Make it simple, and then you just raise your stop on that on, on at least part of the position as it goes high. If it makes an all-time high, goes to 155.42 or higher, you're just raising the stop, and you've got the benefit of at least another uh, two points that you wouldn't have had, and that's just the way to do it. I don't see, I don't see uh, any reason to make a fuss about it. Okay, now, oh, if this is a very long-term position, then you've got to give it a wider stop, that's all. But I, I, I'm satisfied with what we just discussed. Now I want to look at the, um, what I was saying is before, the SMHs have been very weak. That's impacting the QQQ series. 
and the QQQ right now is um, not showing this. Look, it's up 0.19. The Dow's up 0.14. The QQQ, uh, no, what was it? The uh, SPY is up 12, 0.12. So, you know, in a sense, maybe, uh, yeah, it's percentage-wise a little bit better, but it, it's got a lot of work to do. I'm not sure it's going to make a new high just yet. All right? So, uh, a couple of quick questions here. I showed earlier the chart just as a curiosity. Race is the Ferrari. Made it quite a double top in the weekly chart. Chapman Wave 5, as well as a peak G. Pulls back quite sharply from just over 100, 121 back on the 1st of November. Peak G in the daily. Slumps down to 104. That is 17 points. That is a, what, about a 13%, 14% decline? That's a big decline. And this is telling me something about the general economy, that if the Ferrari is not being bought right now, trading at 106.54 down 26, we've got to be a little bit careful if the very wealthy are being careful and holding back a little bit. I think that we just need to be careful that there could be some kind of a consolidation after spectacular gains, and then we'll start up again. I've already started preparing something that I'll do sometime later in the weekend, as I probably won't be able to do very much uh, Saturday and maybe part of Sunday. But by Sunday evening, Monday, I'll be doing quite a lot of work for my subscribers, looking at the year ahead. We're still in the bank stock. We're still in um, we're still in steel. We're still in, um, actually, we're still in the dollar. I should have switched from the dollar to gold. That was a mistake. Everything was there for me to do it. I just kind of didn't believe it. You know, sometimes um, human beings get in the way of, technical thinking um, and uh, you know we, we have started some short positions and so far I'm kind of comfortable with the short positions all of the short positions we'll see what happens over the coming few days so that was race and the other question was fiat there's an interesting uh, documentary on the um, grandson I think the son or grandson of the fiat uh, Gianni Angeli on HP a great biography okay well let's just look at FCAU now this is very interesting because it's, it's had a very nice ABC, this is a leg D, right? a peak D in the Fiat Chrysler, um, Fiat Chrysler, uh, what is it? Fiat Chrysler, something. Fiat Chrysler, oh, auto company, AC. Um, and it's gone to the D, E, F, maybe it's a G in the weekly, but this is really good. It's a leg D in the monthly. This is fantastic. So I, I, I promised a long time ago that if I found enough time, I was going to go around to a couple of dealers and just test. Co I haven't test driven cars for I don't know how long. Um, so I thought I'd just do that. So I'm hopping around at different dealers. Whenever I get a chance, I just slip out of a bunch of dealers fairly nearby. And I just pop in and I, I test a car and I go, I have to tell you, I, I'm shocked, but I'm not surprised. Um, I mentioned when the airlines did that fantastic thing, they, they used to go broke on, on a regular basis. Every year or two, at least one or two of the airlines went broke. They didn't go broke anymore. Why? Because they are just charging for everything. So I said, let's watch how all the different, the restaurants, uh, the automobile companies, how everybody's going to pick up this idea, a la carte, you make much more money than just a package. So what are they doing? You can buy your base car, let's say, I'm just guessing, just let's call it, uh, let's go with Camry. Camry for uh, basically 20, let's call it 22 to 24 with some discounts and all. This is your basic car. Fantastic car. It does everything you want. But you can move that up to 34, 36,000 by getting all the electronics and all the, and all the electronics. I said to one of the dealers, I said, wait a minute, the GPS costs like five bucks or three bucks to make or maybe 15 bucks to give it a benefit of the doubt. And you're charging a thousand bucks, um, at least a thousand. So he said, "No, it's a, you've got the wiring. You got to, come on, your wiring. Then all gets done in in the, the making of the car. This is these are. Let's put it. Let's just say it costs them two hundred dollars to do all the electronics. They are charging three thousand, four thousand, five or, or eight thousand even. So this is an incredible time, and that's the reason why some of these. And this is Jeep, of course. Jeep is a Fiat Chrysler product. Uh, um, now, so Jeep is selling. There's a dealer near me. I, I, every time I go by, I see new Jeeps on the lot. I said, they must be selling like hotcakes. So I'm saying to myself, it is the cost to the consumer and the profits that are being generated. And even though you're selling 70 million cars and a lot of dealers are out there, 
I think that they are kind of making money in their own way. So we're going to be watching this real closely. All right, enough with that. I want you to go question about the XLE. Let's just go through this carefully. XLE had a spectacular run. Went to a peak D. It's pulling back. Remember the chapter wave D, E. That's where you want to be a little bit careful. We've got a D in the daily, an E in the weekly on the XLE trading at 72.28 uh, right now. It's down nine cents. It hasn't really turned down much, and the MACD and Stochastic are still good. But I'm watching it. I think that there's going to be a little bit of a pullback. Let's go to gold. Gold also has had a spectacular move. This is just a single leg A. And even today, it's up 4.80 at 12.96. This is excellent action on the weekly basis. We've seen this many, many times before. In fact, all of 2017, you saw this spectacular single leg to the upside and then failure patterns. Will this fail? I'll talk about that when we get back because this is going to be the big question about inflation. I'll be back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your Money, work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com and when you sign up you gain instant access to john logan's most recent webinar how price volume and time make market profiles so unique this hour-long webinar with john logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader you pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free for more information on the taz profile scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey folks, I, I, I'm just going to break for a second because I was asked about it and I almost forgot. Yesterday, I completely forgot about it and I wanted to do it. The cryptocurrencies, I made a, an effort to... Uh, exactly a week ago, uh, Wednesday night, last night, a week ago last night when I was at the uh, giving a talk here in the Boston area, um, to say that everything about I was, what I was looking at suggested that we had made a top in the cryptos on a shorter term basis, but you've got to be really careful. And of course, yesterday you got Gavin from, from Massachusetts, leave it to Massachusetts. Uh, um, uh, what, what, what is Gavin again? He's uh, Gavin. 
Anyway, um, uh, so he came out and said he's warning against. He's, he's, uh, I'm just forgetting his title. He's warning against the cryptocurrencies. He, he, he thinks it's a scam. Be careful of a scam and all that stuff. So he's the guy. Uh, he's not the guy, but he's the, that department is the department that came out and said that Apple could be a scam. You've got to watch out and because they were 100% correct there because it was a scam. If you were short. You're being scammed because it actually just kept going higher. So um, I'm just saying that this is where the warnings come out. I think this is important. It's it's actually part of the process. The processes of legitimizing this. I, I've been talking about this for a long time. I just I've read so much about it. I just don't see it as a currency at all until it can stabilize. But most importantly, um, how can you pay for something today at? Um, Call it 14,000. Or let's go back a week or so ago, 19,000. How can you pay for 19,000? And today that very thing is worth the value of whatever it is you're using as currency, which is now based at 14,000. Come on, you cannot do that. You can use fractions of a penny, maybe when you go to the uh, to, to change money at the, um, you're going to Europe and you go to the counter and the foreign exchange counter, you can get these, these this is different, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. So you pay for a house. You pay um, 500000 for a house in, in Bitcoin. And uh, a week later, that house is valued at 750000 or 300000 a week later. And, and even as you're about to make the payment. So as a payment, I see nothing. As a, as a form of tradable, think of it as a tradable. That's it. And if you can make money, great. But in the meantime, I mentioned this last week. I showed it a number of times, showed it this week. The arch formation, learn that. That's the pattern that in my CD introducing the chapter made methodology. Spent a lot of time talking about the arch and the cup formations. Look at the center line. See if you can get a plumb line. See if you can get a left side, right side. Look at the beauty of this. I'm not even doing I'm doing it visually. I bet that's almost exactly left side to the right side. I may even remember. I think this is a 15-minute chart. doesn't matter. Um, whatever it is, look at the patterns. Patterns don't fail. They just continue to repeat over and over, and then they invert. So I'm just saying, treat it as a tradable. Don't get carried away. The pattern you follow right now, and I think it's going to be that for a little while longer, is the failing pattern, the dreaded H, the lowercase h, that tests the left side low and then breaks down. That's all I'm saying. Okay, now the next thing is gold. So here you are. If I use gold left side, right side price, time that should take it to... Um, the 2nd of January to try to test the high of 1,303.5 made on the 27th of November. That's not exactly the plumb line. I had to move the plumb line because visually it had already passed that or it was exactly at that. But the Chapman Wave inside wedge has got the, an exact lock on the resistance, and there it is. I think that we are real close to some kind of a pullback. Now, I was asked about single leg A to the upside. Let's go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper coming up. It's, it looks like a single leg A. It's actually in leg C right now. It should go a little higher, um, but it's beginning to get to an area that says this is where you can start to see some kind of a pullback. I drew in the rectangle formation yesterday. I'm thinking that if there is a consolidation, it's a high-level consolidation. Look at this beautiful weekly chart. I don't know what the, the, the weekly chart is. It's either F or B. F is kind of saying, whoa, be careful. B is saying, whoa, buy any dip. But it's the monthly chart that says, look, we can go all the way to sometime in, is that May? Um, and we're almost there now. But it takes you until May to try to get to the top that was made back in July of 2014 of 3.442, continuous contract, remember, or the high of January of 14 uh, at 3.508. And it's almost there. It's in leg E and it's testing the Chapman Wave inside wedge resistance line. Beautiful looking chart right now. So high grade copper is in play and it's telling us something about world economies, I believe. I don't want to disbelieve it. So this is saying, High level consolidation probably would fit the the general market right now as well as many markets, international markets are are at, at in D's or E's or even F's in their daily charts. So COP is telling me that things are really good, getting a little bit overbought. It's playing catch up to other things. Next uh, question I had about something like VSI. So VSI is this is that that um, vitamin shop. Yep, vitamin shop. 
trading at 4.28 down seven cents. Yeah, it's had a little a mini Chapman wave peak ABCD, whoops, pull back, ABCDE, and now it's about to pull back. Yeah, it's starting to try a basing level. Would I take a, 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 um, a flyer here at, at 4.28? You know what? I'm going to give it a couple of days. If you miss it and it goes to 460, that's actually good action. And if it pulls back and it goes under 4.70, if it goes to 4.12, I'm going to have to look at it again and say, okay, is this an opportunity to buy us and to come back and retest the lows? So that's the way I, I think there's no rushing to get into anything on the long side right now. I think there's time unless they're in certain sectors that are on fire. Um, so the XR, RTH is what I want to look at. RTH is the retail market vectors ETF. It's made a P, making a PD today. The MACD and stochastic are pulling back quite sharply, but the stochastic still at 87%. But it's making look that arch formation. I always treat that arch formation with great respect. If you think of it as gravity, if you if you're hitting, say, a tennis ball, like I like to do, and you're hitting it from one side to the other. Let's say it's the lob because you're playing doubles or whatever it is, and you're putting it. And everybody's up at net, and you want to put it behind them. Your lob. Well, it's going to make the arch formation and then come back down again. That's different to the weekly chart, which has gone almost straight up and says, you know what, the momentum, the velocity to the upside is such that it would take a really negative story to make an inverted V-shape plunge to the downside. Two patterns should unfold here. Either you're going to just gently start going under the 91.73 level. Now you're going to go underneath 91, sorry, 90.80. And that's going to set off a string of lower lows and lower highs. Or you're going to immediately pull back on some kind of bad news and you'll be under 90 by, by Wednesday week. In other words, another four sessions or so. Now, there's a third possibility. I just don't see it right now. And that is not only do you spike up, but you close up in the 92.83 area. That's a dollar higher. I don't know what's going to do that. So I'm thinking arch formation, at least a gentle pullback, if not a more severe one. But it's, it's D in the daily, F slash C in the weekly, market vectors, ETF, monthlies in leg D. Uh, it's really, and here's a move. This is a question I was asked about. In the Chapman Wave methodology, could I do um, um, a segment on the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation? See, long leg, body, must be an oval body, can't be a rectangle, and then a breakout to the upside. Well, that went to the neck. That could be the head and that could be the beak back into the body. This could be a brand new move. I don't want to take time now. Let's spend the first week of January going through different patterns, what we can expect. I've already started uh, drawing out the pattern that I'm anticipating for the first uh, two months or so of Jan uh, January, February of 2018. I'll send to subscribers maybe later this weekend. I'll be back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. You know, I, I'm sure I'm going to run out of time with about 200,000 things to say. But I, I, as I said that, I just remembered for one whole week, really one whole week, I've been wanting to mention that there's a play, a musical going on in Watertown at the New Rep Theatre here in, in the Boston area, uh, The Man of La Mancha. And it is so brilliantly done. It is a musical. I, 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 I thought I'd seen Man of La Mancha. It's also like Don Quixote. I played the music. I've been, I was the bass clarinetist in the orchestra in Don Quixote. It's a fantastic piece by Richard Strauss. Um, there's, all the way through, there's these beautiful solos between the solo cellist, and then in the orchestra, there's the, the tuba and the bass clarinet play, and play them together or by themselves, and it's just a fantastic part to play. But I, this, it's brilliant to done. New rap theater, I just wanted to, you know, we like it here at TFN to talk about things that are really good. This is brilliant, just beautifully done. Um, I, I believe it's on through this coming weekend. So uh, if you get a chance uh, you, to see it now, I meant to, a week ago, I meant to talk. Every time I got on, I said, I got to remember to, to talk about it. Anyway, um, here, look at this. This is the weather right now. Um, if I can hold it up, I'm showing you zero. Usually my, my, my quip around here for the last 20, 30 years or more, um, has been January the 6th, minus 6. This is the 28th of December, and we're zero. It is cold. It is really cold. So um, natural gas is soaring. And I, I, I saw it, and I said, yesterday, I said, don't forget natural gas. UNG, you want to go along? Completely forgot about it this morning. Pity about that. It had a big move up. So this is the gold chart, left side, right side, V-shaped pattern. I think it's getting close to some kind of uh, resistance. The, the single leg A, failure pattern that we've seen so many times, that'll only occur if gold, it really happens very quickly. So within five to 10 sessions, that's over a period of two weeks, if there is a close underneath 12, 12.79 is the 200 period moving average and the nine period moving average. If there is a close under 12.76 in the gold, it's done for now. It's going to take a time out. And the dollar, <laughs> the poor old dollar, getting smacked in the Chapman wave. Hey, oh, oh, look at that. The H pattern. Um, I'm, I'm not sure we're long anymore because I didn't want to take a loss in that position. So I think we got, we're probably, yeah, let me just check. I think we're out. Um, UUP. No, we're not out yet because we got in so fabulously. Well, we're probably going to get out very soon because we don't want to give away some profit. Um, so the dollar is making the H pattern, the dreaded H pattern, and it's retesting this low. Not a good sign 
in the daily weekly chart is still saying, yeah, we could start to make a, a bunch of lows here. As long as we hold 91.01, you could start to build a base over about three to five weeks where finally the dollar breaks out. But as it's doing that, you've got to be looking, look, even silver right now. Silver is in leg C, a huge leg C, also going towards this 200 period moving average in the daily. This is outstanding action on a shorter term. Weekly chart is improving, monthly chart is okay, but it is a definite improvement, no question about that. So dollar is suffering as gold, silver is moving up. Look at this, high grade copper, I did that, high grade copper, leg C, very strong, new recovery highs, needs to go to 3.4 something for uh, to, to retest that major left side uh, high in the monthly chart. But I also wanted to show you natural gas. Natural gas right now is up 6.95%, up 2.922. If you're looking at, this is the continuous contract, and it's in, this, it's in leg B to the upside right now. The weekly is in leg A. This is a little different leg A because the MACD is still very weak. Stochastic still under 20%. So if this is the beginning of a move, then I would say any pullback from 2.923 into the 2.80 area would say, you know what? In natural gas, let me go to the UNG, which is really the trading vehicle, say so gaps up. If it fills the gap for any reason next week into the 5.60, 5.57 area, I would say that's not a bad time to nibble at it to see if it's going to have the legs to really move strongly higher. This is a great gap up, terribly cold weather, and this cold weather should last. I think that natural gas now finally is in place some. I'm covering a lot of things. Question I had was, okay, I did that, did that, did that. Uh, Bob wants to know about FCX. You know, FCX, a lot of people got in perfectly for FCX. I was looking at it. I was just, I don't know, I was so slow with these commodities. I can't believe it. Usually I like to dive it. Didn't. So leg D in the monthly, leg D in the weekly, leg E with a doji candle from yesterday in the daily, and it made a new recovery high. But if um, F CX Freeport McMoran trading at 19.07, up 38 cents. If it takes out, and what I'd recommend to people is take something off that you're comfortable with, realizing that it's a tremendously strong move to the upside. Um, if it's going to give it back, I'm suggesting it's going to go rectangle formation. Tremendous support in the 17s over a period of a week and a half. We don't even know where it's turning to the downside. So just take a little off. I would keep a core position. It is really acting very well. Freeport, McMoran, Copper Company, I think they're in a lot of different metals. Uh, uh, Sarah wants to know about the UUP. I just discussed that. That was the dollar. Uh, you just, it, it's, it hasn't worked out. And the next thing is FXE, which is the euro. Now, that's very interesting because the euro, and then if I haven't, oh, why do I have to keep doing this? All right. Well, this is A, B, C. It's trying to make a cup formation to a D. I think the euro is acting very well. Uh, is this the currency? Yeah, this is the euro acting very well. I'd rather go to the EUR USD because I've got that all notated. This one's much better. This is a very strong leg D. This is um, not an overlapping wave D. This is just a regular D right here. I've got it written as a C. That was a gray C. Now it's really a D. So this is very strong. And the reason why I want to just take a moment to look at it is that cup formation, look at this, look at this. How many, I don't know, just like in leg Ds and peak Ds, thousands and thousands of times I've shown it here at TFNN in my 13, 14 years here. Uh, let me just show you something else. This cup formation, look how important it is. It went right there. So it's a day late. Is it a day late? Yeah, it's one bar late. That's one day in the left side, right side price time match. If you use the plumb line as the exact low that was made on the 12th of uh, December at 1.171. 1 1 and now it's broken to leg D. MACD is good, not great, but good. Stochastic's at 83%. Good, not great, because it only just got there. It hasn't flattened out yet. But it's is in, in a gray leg B. And this is what I'd drawn in a long time ago. I said, I think this is going to be the consolidation phase. And it's made a successful H, and it's rallying. So I'm suggesting to you that the euro-dollar currency pair is showing enough strength to say 1.18 to 1.1. Yeah, the whole 1.18 area is very strong support. 
let's see what happens over the coming week because if it holds very nicely in, in the 1.197 area if it can get there then it's probably going to retest the all-time high. No, the, the recovery high that we made in September of 2017 at 1.209. 1.209. Acting very well. Breaking. Uh, has it broken above? 1.196, 1.19547. Oh, it hasn't broken. If it closes above the high of the, third, the week of the 1st of December, 1.196, that's going to be positive. It hasn't done that yet. Basil Chaplin, Tiger Traditions, now the last segment before we wrap up 2017. I will not be here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. A whole bunch of questions came in. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is this. I, I want to do a couple of things. First of all, it's really important to me. I'd like to say thank you very much to uh, Tom O'Brien and Tommy O'Brien. They've, you know, the, the package that they've put together here at TFNN for us hosts is just, it makes things really simple for us. Very easy. We just we show up. We do our work the best we can. Everything uh, everything else is taken care of. I think that's incredible. And my engineers, uh, to Alan, John, thank you so much. But also to the TFNN crew, the people behind the scenes. I haven't been to Florida for quite a while now. I don't even know who's around there. But uh, thank you all for what you do. And thank, I think on behalf of the listeners as well, I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people are very grateful. Now, the couple of things that I want you to talk about. Going into this coming year, there's a chance that we're going to see some kind of a consolidation. How the, the market rotates, because that's really what has kept the market up for seven years. Every time there's been a, what should have been a big correction, instead we've got a rotation into different sectors. 
But if we go into the commodities, and if the commodities and if inflation rears its ugly head because yields have pushed higher, I haven't even looked at yields yet today. Uh, if yields start to really move much higher, that's going to be very important as well. It's going to be impacting the, the real estate market. It's going to be doing a lot. So I think that this year is going to be one of the most exciting years. Last year, this past year, in, a, in essence, for those people who just bought and didn't even look at the market, it was an incredible year. They just kept looking and saying, and I know so many people that would just shake their head and say, well, what a crazy market. I mean, that was the expression I heard all the time. Shake their head next, side to side and say, crazy market with a little bit of a smile on their face saying, well, I'm not complaining, but crazy. Yeah, that's because you read the news. If you were reading the news, you were just bamboozled and everything. But in fact, the, the, this coming year is going to see something else. And I think that something else is going to see volatility, extreme volatility, surprises that finally see markets pull back that they never did last year. But we might just see a series of drops and then rallies and drops and rallies without really breaking down. That's a possibility. So I think this is going to be an exciting year. I think we're starting to choose. I think that the steels, the banks, I think there's certain sectors that are still looking very good longer term. On the short term basis, we're going to see what happens in the next week. I think that by the third or fourth session of January, we will know a lot about January and February. Hey, have a wonderful New Year. I'll be back on Tuesday. Thank you so much for everything. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.